the smoker. A boy lived in the woods, and his father told him never to go eastward, but to play in the clearing by their hut, or to walk towards the west. For some years the boy obeyed his father, but as he grew older and the paths of the west became dusty with use, he felt himself drawn to the unknown trees and the green trackways, and one day he set off towards the east. He found a lake and knelt down to drink, but the water was alive with savage fish, and he nearly lost a hand. He crouched by the shore and watched the fins swirl the water, and a stranger came up behind him so softly that the boy knew nothing until the man spoke. Let us see who can throw a spear the farthest. <laughs> Very well, said the boy, and he won easily. Let us run around the lake, said the man. I agree, said the boy, and he won that too. Let me show you the island in the middle of the lake, said the man. Do you like fish, said the boy? I can see the island from here. The man whistled, and a boat came into sight drawn by three flying swans. The man and the boy stepped into the boat and were carried to the island. But as soon as they landed, the boy wished that he had stayed at home, for the man knocked him down and left him and went back across the lake. The boy felt his bruises. Nothing was broken, although he ached from the fists. He limped about the island to find food, but there was little except berries and roots and no shelter. He sat and watched the night come. If you would be good enough to dig an inch or so into the earth, said a voice close by him, you would do me a great kindness. The boy was startled, for there was no one to be seen. I'm in the leaf mold, said the voice. The boy scraped the last year's autumn, and underneath he found a skeleton lying yellow on the ground. I am much obliged, said the skeleton. Now one more thing, if you will. Under that tree just by the bowl there's a pouch buried. Would you bring it to me? The boy put his hand down by the bowl and found a tobacco pouch in the soil, and a pipe, and flint. It would gratify me, said the skeleton, if you would light the pipe and put it in my mouth. The boy did so, and held the pipe between the skeleton's teeth. Ah, thank you, thank you, said the skeleton. It's the mice, you see. They nest in my ribs, and only the smoke will move them. Such a torment they are, and such a blessing this is. The boy sat without moving until the skeleton had finished the pipe. Now, said the skeleton, you will want to know what you can do about the man who brought you here. Well, I'll help you. He's on his way now with dogs to hunt you for sport. So you must run up and down all over the island, leaving tracks, and be sure to touch every tree. Then when he comes, hide at the top of a tree, and they will never find you. And that is what the boy did. And the dogs could not find him, for his scent was everywhere. At dawn the man took them off and went back to the land. He will come at night, said the skeleton, and it will be to drink your blood. But you must dig a hole in the sand near where the boat is beached and wait for him to start looking for you. All that day the boy held the pipe for the skeleton. And remember, said the skeleton, 
don't return for a year. Then, if you will bring me a little tobacco, perhaps, it would be most beneficial. Indeed it would. The boy hid in the sand until the man had disappeared among the trees, and then he ran to the boat and jumped in. As soon as they felt the movement, the swans flew back to the land, taking boat and boy with them safely among the deadly fish. And the boy went home and stayed westwards for a year. At the end of the year he made his way to the lake again. The swans were waiting. The island was unchanged. I've brought a new pipe and pouches of tobacco, said the boy. You are more than considerate, said the skeleton. The nesting season has been a great burden. The boy lit the pipe, and the mice were soon cleared. Can I do anything more to help you, said the boy? You saved my life. Shall I bury you? No, said the skeleton. I would rather know the sun and the rain, the wind and the moon, and let them do their work. It's pleasanter here than in the dark. So the boy built a hut on the lake shore, and each day he came with the swans to light the skeleton's pipe and to keep him company until the sun and the rain, the wind and the moon had done their work, and nothing remained to tempt the busy mice.